In the battles of Aegon's conquest, prior to the Field of Fire, we got a brief idea of how a single dragon could turn the tide of a battle. So if one dragon could cause devastation, what kind of damage could Aegon do with all three? With the Riverlands pacified at Harrenhal, and the Stormlands, during the battle known as the Last Storm, atop the hills of Bronzegate, Aegon had turned his attention to the Lannisters in the Westerlands, and the Gardeners in the Reach. For the coming offensive, Aegon would give Lord Mouton command of the Targaryen forces, as most of Aegon's ever-growing army were made up of men from the recently conquered Riverlands. The logic of choosing a lord they knew and trusted to lead them was a smart move by Aegon, with Mouton already proving loyal to him, being one of the first lords to join him upon his landing. After the last storm and the fall of Argilac Daradin, the last storm king, Lauren Lannister, king of the rock, joined forces with Mern Gardner, king of the reach. This move really shows the impact Aegon was having on Westeros, with two kingdoms who have warred on and off countless centuries joining forces. Despite this, there was still a sense of complacency among the Lannister and Gardner union. Not truly understanding their peril, they marched their men to Golden Grove. Between the two kings, they had about 50,000 men, much more than Aegon's growing force of 11,000. This 55 also included 5,000 mounted knights. Joining the kings were the notable houses of Oakheart, Florence, Rowan Peak, and Red Wine. Having brought half as many more men to the battle than Lauren, Mern commanded the centre, and his son, Edmund, led the vanguard. Lauren led the right flank, while Lord Oakheart had the left. Lord Manfred Hightower, Lord of the Hightower, heeded the advice of the High Septon and did not join his liege lord, King Mern, on the march, and instead kept his forces back back at Old Town. This in itself proved to be a strange move, as some speculated the High Towers did not join the battle in the hopes of being made Aegon's Wardens of the South after the battle was over. The two armies met in the plains south of the Blackwater, in the wide open fields of Wheat and Barley, during a particularly dry summer. The two kings wanted to use a proven battle tactic, using their vanguard and centre to hit Aegon hard, then using the left and right wings to flank Aegon, encircling him. This was a battle-tested move, and Aegon, setting up a defensive crescent formation, suited this approach. The charge began, and began to break the Targaryen spear lines, as expected. But before the flanking could begin, Aegon and his sisters, Visenya and Rhaenys, took to the air on their dragons, Beleriand, Meraxis, and Vhagar. At this moment, the battle was already over, but the foolish kings did not see their doom coming. The dragon began to set the fields aflame on all sides of the battlefield, especially upwind of the Gardener and Lannister forces. The location with all the wheat and barley was perfect fuel to burn. Lord Mouton's Targaryen forces were safely upwind, allowing them to finish off the soldiers who emerged from the flame. King Lauren Lannister rode through the flames to safety when he realised Aegon would be triumphant and there was no hope of fighting the power of the dragons. Aegon and the dragons killed about 4,000 Lannister and Gardner men and routed the army. Among the dead, King Mern and all his sons, grandsons, brothers and cousins. The house was wiped out in one fiery blow. The knights of the Order of the Green Hand were wiped out as well. Lord Armin Peak and his sons perished. Another 2,000 men perished from sword and spear, fighting Lord Mouton's ground forces, and 10,000 men suffered burns. In total, the Targaryens lost less than 100 men, most in the initial charge, and Visenya Targaryen also took an arrow to the shoulder, perhaps a sign that the dragons, although powerful beyond imagination, were not infallible, that there could still be ways to deal them damage, but at what cost? The Field of Fire was the only time in Aegon's conquest that all three dragons were used at the same time, and in the grand scheme of the conquest proved to be the defining blow. The swords of the defeat were sent down river on the Blackwater Rush to the Aegon Fort, where they were formed part of Aegon the Conqueror's Iron Throne. King Lauren Lannister was detained the following day, where he agreed to give up his kingship and become Warden of the West, under the rule of House Targaryen. Aegon next marched for the extinct gardener's seat of Highgarden, whose steward Harlan Tyrell surrendered without conflict. Aegon rewarded him by giving House Tyrell domain over the Reach and raising them to Lords of Highgarden, Lord Paramount of the Mandat and Warden of the South. It's speculated that this was perhaps the Hightower's hopes that by remaining remaining neutral and handing over Old Town with no fight that they would have been made Wardens of the South in place of the Gardeners. This might explain to some extent some of the actions with some speculating they had their own agenda. The true impact of the Field of Fire can be seen soon after when Aegon marched north to deal with King Torrin Stark. Aegon gathered 45,000 men from across the realm when King Torrin saw the size of Aegon's forces and learned of the burning of Harrenhal and the massacre of the Field of Fire. He bent the knee and submitted to Aegon who in turn named him Warden of the North. It was now clear up and down the realm the arrival of the dragons had changed open battle forever. However, there was one kingdom that didn't get the memo. Dawn.